Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Susan Brown, Director of the Center for Better Bones. It's great to be with you today. I'm going to answer a few of the questions that we've been receiving over the past week. We receive many questions and every week I like to answer a few. As we begin, I want to remind you about the really interesting course we have coming up on osteopenia. This is an online course. You can still sign up for it. It's going to begin the end of September. And you can learn everything your doctor never told you about osteopenia. And you can be empowered and set aside any fear you have about osteopenia and learn how to build lifelong bone strength. I hope you join us. Now in the meantime, to the questions. The first question is <clears throat> a very interesting question from a woman who's been really doing a pretty good job. <clears throat> I've been trying to exercise, take supplements, and eat a bone healthy diet for a couple of years now, but my scores, and she means her bone density scores, are only slightly improving. Should I be concerned, or is this normal for a 59-year-old woman? At least I'm not getting worse. And I would say to her that it's really very good if you can stabilize bone. The average woman at 59 is losing bone, perhaps 1% or a half a percent a year. So she's stabilized, that's great. If you do all the basics like she's doing, all the basics parts of the Better Bones program uses supplements like the Better Bones Builder, you can generally stabilize bone. If you want to build more bone, you definitely need to do it to higher impact exercises. And we're going to talk about that here and also in our exercise channel that's coming up that we'll be letting you know about soon. <clears throat> so, it's great it's not getting worse, be happy. We can enhance some aspects of this, particularly the muscle building, the strength training, if we want to have more than stability, if we want to actually build bone. The next question is, if I am taking the Better Bones Builder supplement, what other of the bone nutrients do I need to take? The Better Bones Builder is unique in that it's the most comprehensive bone formula on the market. I formulated it to include the 22 key bone building nutrients plus 20 other nutrients, all of which are essential for excellent body health. So you end up with a very comprehensive multivitamin and mineral that's particularly focused towards bone. And for most people, this is all they really need. This builder is also unique in that it alkalizes. It has minerals and alkalizing forms, so it will put your pH back into balance in almost every case. Now, should you say, I'm taking this builder and I still have a bit of an acid load, as measured by the first morning year and not being 6.5 to 7.5, being lower than that, then we'd say, well, we've got to increase the alkalizing compounds. So we would use magnesium in an alkalizing form, add it to the builder, or we might add the special vitamin C powder that we have available that is actually an ascorbate that alkalizes. So sometimes you add magnesium, the buffered vitamin C powder, if you cannot alkalize. Also, of course, some people have a much greater need for vitamin D than others. The builder has 2,000 units of D. Uh, for many people, perhaps who live in the southern parts of the country, that might be fine. I'm up in New York. I personally have to take 5,000 units or even 6,000 units of vitamin D to get the desired 50 to 60 level. So you might have to add some vitamin D. What we suggest is you do the builder, you alkalize, you do your exercise, you do that alkaline diet. You even work to reduce stress and enhance digestion. And then if it's not going well, we can supplement more and also we can go back and look for other causes of bone weakening. The builder is a great product. Is there equivalent product for men? You know, we, these basic nutrients are good for men as well as women. Since men tend to eat a bit more, a man might be able to do with just six of the builders instead of eight of them. But it's perfectly fine for men to use this also. The next question is, could you please tell me what you use for the fats? I know it's EFAs, essential fatty acids, but what specifically? Right now, I'm taking a quality krill oil. Would this supplement replace my krill? And what she's talking about is the Better Bones Builder Omega-3 Fats. Omega-3 fats have been shown to be very important for bone health. Specifically, people with higher levels of omega-3 fats in the blood, 
that is EPA and DHA, have much less hip fracture risk and have a better dense bone density in the hip. The omega-3 fats are extremely anti-inflammatory and they're important building blocks for bone. Now krill is a source of omega-3 fats and that's a nice oil, particularly for people who have the, the fish oils repeat on them. The Better Bones Builder has 600 milligrams of EPA and DHA and that's a great starter. So it would be fine to use the Builder with the krill or you could say I'm just going to use a krill. We often use a cod liver oil which has maybe 3,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA together. Remember even the American heart doctors are saying we should get 600 to 1,000 EPA DHA. At the bone, uh, our bone, at the Center for Better Bones, we even like 3,000 EPA and DHA combined. A great supplement. And when you look at the bottle, be sure they give you EPA and DHA content. Sometimes they say total EFAs, but you don't want that. You want to look at the EPA and DHA. Very important. Coconut oil and olive oil are nice fats. Olive oil is particularly interesting because it has some plant compounds uh, that actually have been shown to stimulate new bone formation. And in Spain, they have researched this and they've made a product. They, they extract some of these compounds from olives and make a product called bone olive, which really does also help to build bone. And what they said is you can take the supplement or you can take three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. A great idea. Coconut oil has many benefits and it's fine to use it. I wouldn't depend on it for my essential fats though. What's the latest research on dairy for bone health? I love cheese. I think this was a woman from Kansas. You think she might be from Wisconsin. I personally like cheese too, and what the research shows is if a person is not sensitive to dairy, if they can digest it well, dairy is a fine food. It's high in certain minerals like calcium, it's high in protein. If a person doesn't digest dairy well, you don't want to really use it. But as a whole, what we do see now is the need for calcium has been overstated. We put far too much attention on calcium, getting enough calcium, and not paying attention to all the other bone building minerals. So now the government is saying 1200 milligrams of calcium from diet and supplement is all you need. And as we look around the world, and as I looked around the world for my book, Better Bones, Better Body, we see many cultures that had six, seven, even 500 milligrams of calcium and did fine. So don't expect milk to be your solution. In fact, studies have shown that if you're very, very deficient in calcium, milk can help, but otherwise it's not going to be such a gigantic bone booster. But if you can digest it, it can be a good source of protein and nourishment. And it's certainly better than sodas and other things that people are drinking today. The next question is about strontium. Uh, this person writes, and we're going to suspect this person is from Europe. I I am extremely disappointed that strontium renolate is no longer manufactured. I was diagnosed with osteoporosis 22 years ago. I was initially prescribed Fosamax, which I took for nine months. I stopped the Fosamax due to adverse side effects. I took pro, 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 protolose, protolose for over 10 years. Protolose is a strontium. And my bone density increased. Protolose agreed with my system and I am now looking for a healthy alternative. Okay, so this is kind of complicated. To my knowledge, strontium renolate is available still in Europe. I just noticed on the internet that the, the British no longer import it, but it's a French product and it's still available. The problem is it's a drug therapy and the problem is it had serious side effects. So after many years of using it, the European medicines agency in 2014 said we really shouldn't recommend this for bone because of the increased risk of heart attack and blood clots. Then there was some concern about this and some negotiating and they decided that they could use it in only a selected population that this drug strontium renolate could only be used in people who didn't have heart disease, didn't have a risk of strontium, didn't have a risk of clots and for whom no other bone drug would work. So, it's interesting, you liked it, but the government agencies in Europe did found it was not really terrifically safe. 
Um, there's other problems with strontium. It deposits in bone. It makes the bone look stronger when it, it may not, it won't be as strong as it looks. Even though strontium in the short term does reduce fracture um, a little bit. And it's the one bone drug that tends to help build new bone. So the long and the short of it is strontium renolate is not available in the U.S. It never was. In the U.S., you can buy strontium as a supplement, but again, you're taking high dose, drug dose level strontium that we really don't recommend. And in Europe, the drug of strontium was found to be uh, considerably unsafe, and so its use is restricted. What's the alternatives? <clears throat> of course, we at the Center for Better Bones see our natural bone building program using a wide range of nutrient supplements like the Better Bones Builder to actually build bone while we do an alkaline diet, while we do appropriate exercise, while we reduce stress, while we build digestion, and while we look for the causes of bone loss. Every single case I see whenever a person comes to me, the first step is to see why are you losing bone. And many times there's a real reason we can identify whether it's use of a certain medicine, whether it's a vitamin D deficiency, whether it's a loss of calcium in the urine. You wanna to go to the root of the problem and going to the root, you can find many alternative ways. So check out our site, betterbones.com. We have lots of information on building bone and information on understanding why you might be losing bone. Okay, the next question, cyptirazine, which is Zyrtec. Is Zyrtec harmful to bone? Zyrtec, as most of you might know, is an antihistamine. What it means is the body is having this allergic white blood cell response and producing a lot of histamines that cause congestion and inflammation. Zyrtec is a very common antihistamine. It hasn't directly been related to bone loss like some other drugs have, like the antidepressants or serotonin uptake inhibitors or prednisone. But it has, but it does indicate to us that there's some underlying problems, problems with the immune system that haven't been addressed. So the idea is to try to find out the cause of the allergy. Many clients can just clean up their environment, maybe get some filters in their bedroom, maybe take some care with their food or even some allergy testing and correct the allergies. We find that using higher dose of scorbate and nutrients like quercetin really help to reduce allergy. So this won't directly affect bone, but it's good to get to the cause of the problem. And in this case, the cause is allergy, which is an immune situation. So every week we want to bring some little details, little answers to your questions. Don't hesitate to ask more questions. We can't answer all of them, but we'll do our best. We've been getting a lot of questions about magnesium. We now know magnesium is real important to bone and even levels up to a thousand milligrams. Yet many people contact us and say, geez, I just take a little magnesium or even I take the 500 milligrams in the Better Bones Builder and I get loose stool or I even get diarrhea. So we're gonna talk about this use of magnesium, the science behind magnesium causing a loose stool, and how this really means that you have a block to magnesium uptake. It doesn't mean you don't need the magnesium, and we're gonna teach you how to correct that block. So join us next week on Facebook. We're gonna talk about magnesium and how to enhance your uptake. And in the meantime, have a great week, and we'll see you all soon.